Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. With all this talk about supply chain issues and things of this nature, I thought I'd put out an early Christmas shopping video on some items that were sent to me for review by my friends over at Hyger. And uh, these are three items. I have shown them before, or at least uh, let you have a glimpse at them in some of my live streams. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at them. And uh, I think you'll like all three of them. Let's go. So the first item is uh, called a Hyger Aquarium Biochemical Sponge Filter. You can see the box here. And uh, this is a really interesting uh, sponge filter. They give you two extra sponges, which kind of surprised me because it seems to me like these sponges would, would pretty much last forever as long as you gently rinse them, you know, squeeze them in a, in a bucket of tank water if you want to preserve the, the beneficial bacteria. But they do give you two extra sponges. And, uh, and the actual sponge filter is very, very straightforward. You have this, this line here where your airline goes into, right? And this is where your bubbles would come out. So this would be attached to the sidewall of your aquarium. And then you have this unit So this just fits on here. As you can see, you get two suction cups. And uh, so you can position these any way you want. Everything tucks in nicely. Now, these bottom compartments here, put this box down. These bottom compartments here actually hold media. So you open this up and you can put media like something like these ceramic balls can go into this bottom section here and that would provide you with some uh, a little bit of a little bit of beneficial bacteria media now in my mind and you know you know how I think if you watch the channel I think that a lot of your uh, beneficial bacteria is going to be living in the sponges and again if you just give them a gentle squeeze in some tank water maybe every every few weeks you're going to have a nice uh, colony of beneficial bacteria living in this kind of a sponge filter. I would say I would put this in something like um, maybe a 29 gallon or larger and up, you know, flush up against the side of the tank. It's not gonna look too bad, uh, you know, on the side. If you put in the bat in the back, it'll be a little bit more of an eyesore, but I think up against the side, and especially if you have a black background like the majority of my tanks, it's not gonna look uh, bad at, at all. These sponges, of course, they, they're on a base. You can see the base there. Just a perforated, perforated piece of plastic. That just goes in there, and, which makes the, cleaning the sponges, removing them and working with them very, very easy. So you can put whatever you want in here. They provide you with some media, but of course you can end up putting whatever you want. Uh, it looks like a solid unit. I think this was also reviewed by some other prominent uh, fish keepers like uh, like John over at KG Tropicals, and I think uh, I think other stores like the Co-op carry a version of it, and I think it's a, a pretty pretty solid, pretty well made. It doesn't feel cheap, you know. So uh, I'm going to be setting up a 29 gallon, and uh, but I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to put in it. That's that's a surprise. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to be setting up a 29 gallon. I'll probably use this as the filter for it, and. Uh, Maybe even put media from an established tank, maybe cut a couple pieces of established tank media sponges and put it in the bottom of each of these. Help give me a little bit of beneficial bacteria right from the get go. So uh, just, just repurposing that bottom section of the sponge filter. Uh, I'll put links in the description for each of these products and uh, you can go check them out. This is a company which I believe is a cousin of Hyger. And it is, uh, it's A-Q-Q-A, which I guess you would say aqua, kind of a clever way of saying aqua. And in particular with regards to the time of year that we're in, this product can come in really handy. What this is, is a, a lithium battery powered air pump. And this particular model is AQ-012. 
AQ0-12. You can see the uh, designation right there. And um, what I like about this pump, a couple things I like about it. One, of course, is it's got it's got two outlets, two outlets, and a charging port. And you can clip it. Let's say you're you're taking some fish over a long distance and they're in a bucket, or let's say that you went and uh, and and wild caught a few fish. You can attach this to the side of the bucket with that clip, attach it, and uh, just use it as a portable. It has a lithium battery. It'll show you the amount of charge it has. You can see here, this has some partial charge to it. And uh, you have an on off. And it comes with uh, plenty of airline. And this airline seems a bit kinked. What I would do is I, I would run this airline, I'd run it in some hot water just to get the kinks out of it. But you get two nice size, I don't know, maybe three, four feet of airline. Now certainly in a tank like this, I probably need a, a bit more airline and uh, I have plenty of it. So the nice thing with this pump is, of course, apart from being portable and help helps you to move fish over long distances. Uh, you also just charge it. You can charge it directly with a USB into a USB port, or you can uh, plug it into the provided USB plug-in. They give you a USB plug-in that you can just plug into a socket and then have it plugged in all the time if you want. They also include two, two air stones. See them here two of these air stones. Now, the last product I'm gonna show you is, um, is the AQ020. AQ020 and aqua double tube quartz aquarium heater. And this is just a real heavy duty monster that, um, I don't wanna drop anything, but here's the box, AQ020. Okay, it looks like this one is a um, 800 watt model. 800 watts. So it's a pretty powerful unit. And uh, everything about it is very, very heavy duty. Here's the cord. You can see the cord that goes to the, to the heater. That's uh, a pretty, pretty good size, good gauge cord there. Very long cord. And you get a double quartz two units that are wrapped in a heavy duty plastic. Now the reason I like this, the reason I like this is that if you have bigger fish, these fish here, some of these fish are gonna get up to uh, you know, 12, uh, in the case of the, uh, of the trout, where's the trout, he's in, he's in here somewhere, They'll get up over 15 inches, I mean they get pretty large. They can bump a heater very, very hard if they get startled. And uh, I've never had it happen to me, but I guess it's possible that you could shatter, a heater could shatter. So um, this is not gonna happen with this kind of a heater. Now I have the Heiger Titanium uh, inside the sump and it's a thinner model, a thin glass with a little bit of metal on both ends. That one is in the sump, it's short, it's compact, it's a lot of wattage in a small unit, perfect for the sump. This one here, I'm gonna put as a, as a secondary heater. I have a heater in the sump and I'm put a heater in the tank. This is 210 gallons. So, um, so what are you looking at? You're gonna over a thousand watts is the recommended wattage. Even though that heater in the sump has been doing a really good job heating the water as it cycles through. And, um, but I think having this additional, if, if that pump, if the sump pump ever fails, then I'm not gonna have warm water being returned to the tank. And if it gets real cold outside, this, this is in a garage, if it gets cold outside, uh, my, my tank might get a little bit too cold. So uh, this gives me a backup inside the tank. This controls your, this is just your up and down temperature control. This is not a controller. This is not something that's gonna cut off the electricity if the heater malfunctions. 
What this is, is the guts of the heater, which is why you can get so much wattage in small units. They put the thermostats and the controls here. So this is out of the tank, attached to the side of the tank. And so this will then plug into the controller that is a two plug controller that is hanging behind this tank. And what that controller does is when the temperature of the tank hits uh, 80, 80 degrees, it shuts off power. So it doesn't allow the heaters to go crazy to get a, uh, you know, a stuck sensor or a stuck thermostat and then go ahead and, and you know, boil my fish. So uh, at any rate, I'm very impressed with the build. I'm impressed with the look, the sturdiness. I'll probably just hide it in the corner of the tank. With the black background, again, it's not going to be really, you're not going to really be able to really see it. So again, links will be included below. You can check, it's been my experience that uh, that Hygert, I'm sure Aqua is gonna be the same way, is very uh, uh, fairly priced. They do send me these products for review. They do not pay me if, if sales occur because of my videos, but they do send me the, the products. So just a full disclosure. Uh, certainly if after using them for a few months, if I run into some problem, I will uh, share it with you and just to keep it honest and straight and uh, like I have in the past with other products. So, see the links below, uh, visit my Amazon store, become a Patreon, $3 a month or higher if you want, and uh, support the channel that way. Give it a like if you like it, thumbs up, share it, all that good stuff, and I hope this gives you a jump on the upcoming holidays for guy buying uh, gifts for your fishy friends, or like most fish keepers, let's be honest, buying a fish related gift for yourself <laughs> all right thank you for tuning in hope to see you on saturday at cichlids and coffee the live stream and uh, we'll talk about everything from filtration to species profiles to uh what's up with the cichlids and uh come on everybody get over here all right bye-bye